Hello sis D and I'm back with another video. Well I have some interesting news for you guys today, some on the PlayStation 5 as well as the next generation consoles. Now I'm going to start off with the PlayStation 5. Now there is a picture of the PlayStation 5 development kit that is circulating the net. Now we have seen some renders in the last few weeks but this is the first actual picture of a PlayStation 5 dev kit. Now it is quite big and it does have a really funky looking cooling system. I do think that the final system will incorporate the cooling system somehow it may look a little bit different but I think the overall design or efficiency of the cooling system will remain the same now the really juicy information is coming from EGX yesterday digital foundry was there and they actually built a next generation system based on the specifications that they know thus far they also went on to say that Sony has confirmed that the PlayStation 5 will have an 8 core 16 thread CPU which I confirmed in a video earlier this week now they went on to do some tests against the PlayStation 4 Pro as well as the Xbox one X and they got some amazing results we were seeing 1440p 120 Hertz we were seeing 4k above 60 frames per second in some games and they were basically using a Radeon Navi 5700 for this test now they went on to say that they don't really know what GPU will be inside the next generation consoles but they do know that it will have an 8 core 16 thread CPU at least the PlayStation 5 it will have an SSD and they kind of made the system based on what they know thus far now personally I think the next generation GPUs will be more powerful than an RX 5700 or 5700 XT they will be a step above that but based on the 5700 XT and the console that they put together we will still be getting 4k 60 frames per second 1440p 120 frames per second even some games at 4k 120 frames per second will be possible this is definitely a must watch now I am gonna leave a little bit of that video to play here so you guys can see it for yourself but I'm gonna leave a link in the description down below so you can actually watch Digital Foundry's presentation in its entirety. It is a fascinating watch and to be quite honest with you guys it got me really excited for the next generation of consoles. They went on to talk about the SSD, how that every single console will have an SSD and that will allow developers to optimize it and it's something that PCs won't be doing in the beginning. Now we know that some PCs have PCI 4.0 but this technology is going to be built into the consoles and optimized for it. Now it will trickle down to PC a little bit later on but it will not be there in the beginning. As well they also said that the CPU and GPU likely will have some tweaks that will not appear on PC right away as well. Now watch the rest of this video and their presentation and I encourage you to click the link below and watch their presentation in its entirety as it really is a good watch. Well anyways I'll leave you guys with some of their presentation and like I usually say please like, share and subscribe subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys on the next one <laughs> excellent Thanks. excellent welcome thank you so much for coming and thank you for indulging what is basically a flight of fancy on my behalf <laughs> <laughs> um, it all sort of kicks off with this which is um, something I did recently a bit of work where Obviously, we've got next-gen consoles coming, but we don't really know how powerful they're going to be. We know what kind of uh, GPU architecture they're going to be using, CPU and GPU. Now, the question is, just how much more powerful will they be? And I thought I'd put together like a little architectural head-to-head -head here is that a teraflop of last-gen is not equal to a teraflop of next-gen, but it goes beyond that. Not only are we going to have architectural improvements, we're going to have something uh, probably more significant, which is frequency, speed improvements. So how can we define what level of extra performance we're going to get from frequency plus architecture? So we hooked up with ASUS, a Republic of Gamers, to create a PC that's as close to pos as possible to what we know about the next generation consoles. And here it is. So, specs. Ryzen 7 3700X, 8 cores, 16 threads. It's recently been confirmed by Sony. 
that um, the PlayStation 5 will have those 16 threads, those eight right. cores. And um, so, yeah, Ryzen, Zen 2 architecture, it's a match for what Sony are going to be delivering. There will be some cash differences, but ballpark, that's what we're going to be getting. It's a little different on the GPU side, I think, because we don't really know all the details yet. Yeah, so the GPU, we're using here um, RX 5700, and here we've got the RX 5700 XT, which is using the Navi architecture that Sony and Microsoft have confirmed for the next generation machines. Uh, but we don't know the shader count, how much right. compute power is actually going to be in there. But we do know that the 5700 has the same number of compute units as the PS4 Pro while the 5700 XT, which is shown here, um, will have the same, does have the same compute unit count as the Xbox One X. So while we can't get an idea of exactly what the GPU power will be in the next generation consoles, what we can say is how much extra performance you get if there are the same number of compute units with the extra frequency so yeah, right. It kind of helps show the efficiency gains that have occurred over the years with the yep. architecture. So yeah, plus of course the uh, the frequency gains. Absolutely. So yeah, we've got those things stacked up together. Before we talk about the GPU, we can talk about the CPU. And this uh, is key, I think. This I is think one this of, is this well, is where the big gains will happen. Phil Spencer has done quite a lot of messaging. At Microsoft has done a lot of messaging about just how much more powerful the CPU is. And to be frank, the CPU in the current PS4 and Xbox One is... Oh, it's underpowered, to say the least. It was underpowered yeah. in 2013. So, to give you some idea of how bad this CPU is, um, 256 there, that's pretty much ballpark with a 2008 Intel Q6600 quad core. Yeah, this, the Q6600 is the CPU. I mean, this was back during the PS3 360 era. This is what you might have played Crisis 1 on. Yeah. Like, more than 10 years ago. So yeah. that's what we were working with in these consoles. Yeah, so it's, it's disappointing, to say the least. Oh, yeah. And when you see what developers have done with it on the PS4 and Xbox One, pretty amazing. Absolutely. Now, I've done two benchmarks here, 1.6 and 2.3. This represents PS4, which has got 1.6 gigahertz uh, CPU core. Xbox One X is at the other extreme, 2.3 gigahertz. And that's about the max that we could have expected from the Jaguar, I think. Pretty much, yeah. On our next slide here, um, uh, actually, that's exactly the... Uh, that's the same slide. It's the same slide, yeah. Okay. Here uh, we go. So, once we factor in the generational leap of Ryzen, along with the extra frequency, we get a huge increase to performance here. So, you know, essentially, I think we're looking at... Uh, well, let's just take a look at my notes here. Uh, but I think it's a 6.7 times increase to performance on a PC benchmark that is, well, it's pretty rough. It's only sort of indicative at best. That um, Zen 2 score there for the Ryzen 3700X, it won't be using any of the additional features of the Zen 2 core that That's are baked right. in. So 6.7 times increase in performance on a really rough benchmark. We'll expect much more. And, uh, well, I'd say that this is why Sony and Microsoft will be talking up the CPU side of things more than the GPU side, because it's basically, we're actually getting a modern CPU. That's right, Amazing yeah. Amazing things. So we're going to talk about the GPU next. And here's the thing. Uh, as I said, there's things we don't know. We don't know how many compute units it's going to have. But there has been a leak. And um, it a, concerns a processor called Gonzalo. Mm -hmm. There have been various leaks about it, um, specifically about the fact that it's Zen 2 based. We got the CPU frequency from that particular um, leak, 3.2 gigahertz. And um, we now know that Gonzalo is actually almost certainly 99% the silicon that's going to be in PlayStation 5. The reason we know is that our own sources have confirmed that the PlayStation 5 code name is Prospero. Yes. Prospero is a character in the, in the Tempest by Shakespeare. 
Gonzalo is another character in The Tempest <laughs> by Shakespeare. I love all these code names we always get for these new consoles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's kind of like a bit of detective work to, to sort of figure out how everything sort of slots together. But um, we've got an idea of the frequency of the GPU core, even if we don't know um, its exact makeup. And one thing we do need to stress is that although we know it's got a Navi-based architecture, I suspect that there's going to be a lot more features within that GPU that aren't in the current PC parts that we've and got we, right we've now. We've seen this before, like with the sure. previous AMD architectures, like with the PS4 Pro, where they had the rapid path, rapid packed math feature, which was not available in the PC part at the time the Pro shipped. So I suspect we'll see sort of a similar uh, features that have been developed that will eventually roll out into the PC side, but are not currently implemented. And we know that's the case already, because they've already confirmed, both Sony and Microsoft yep, yep. have confirmed hardware accelerated raid facing. This isn't a part of the Navi architecture no. as things stand. So we know that there's going to be more to the GPU than meets the eye. There could be a lot of custom features in there, secret source, as uh, it's often <laughs> referred to. But Let's talk about um, the GPU based on Navi and based on uh, some of our tests that we did with our new PC. And we can measure the performance differential with our Navi-based PC uh, running at those extra clocks. And um, yeah, just looking at my notes again here, but um, we're looking at performance differential of between 95% of extra performance to 110% of extra performance. So, that's pretty <laughs> impressive. <laughs> yeah, and I think one thing to keep in mind with all of this is that these games were designed for the current generation of hardware. They haven't really taken into account the next generation of yes. machines. So this is, I would expect even more performance if this had been designed specifically for those machines, so. I also think that we're actually going to be seeing the GPU used in different yeah, ways. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be paired with a much more capable CPU. It's going to be paired with a solid state storage solution. So it's going to have very, very fast access to a vast amount of data. That's so been the shift this generation as developers have had to sort of move things from the CPU over to the GPU. And there's been a lot of focus on that but now they can kind of bring things back into the CPU, freeing up extra resources on your graphics card, and you know, we should see some interesting results from that, plus the SSD, as you say. Yeah, and uh, yeah, exactly. But it's let's move 126% of extra performance here. I think that's likely due to the fact that we're running at a lower resolution, and also the PlayStation yeah. 4 Pro um, is kind of limited compared to Xbox One X in terms of memory bandwidth, in terms of video memory allocation. So yeah, that might explain some of the, the performance differential mm -hmm. there. But you know, bottom line is that this is pretty impressive stuff. Yeah, it's a nice job. Yes, we're actually getting twice the performance level, but it's actually, I think, being held back because we aren't quite close to 60 frames per second. This so, actually raises some interesting points. You see it's hitting up there. It was well over 120 frames per second. They yep. could conceivably support a 120 hertz mode on this game yeah, on the Microsoft, console, and you'd actually get a very high frame rate experience. Microsoft have already <laughs> talked about 120 FPS gaming for next gen, and this kind of illustrates how it could be done. We've got the CPU overhead this time, and uh, we've got you know a lot of extra Some GPU people power. Might think, well, we are only delivering twice the GPU power of Xbox One X. This could be. Uh, viewed as a disappointment. Well, this is kind of a, a new, new territory for consoles, where we have this, well, at least Nintendo has done this with handhelds, but this mid-generation refresh that the Xbox One X and PS4 Pro offer, uh, that sort of shifted things a lot, right? If we were comparing this to the original Xbox One or the original PS4, which you did there, yeah. uh, the leap does seem more significant. And you also have to consider that a lot of the rendering advances are a little more iterative than in the past, so we're not going to see the, these massive shifts in the way games are drawn, right? So, you know, I think it's that mid-gen thing that's going to throw this off a little bit. But at the same time, I think the increased CPU power and the addition of solid-state storage is big, especially since data access and I.O. has been so difficult this generation. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, access to more data, far superior CPU, and the GPU, well, if we say two times Xbox One X, I think that's pretty awesome anyway, but 
if you compare what is you know, a pretty awesome GPU against the original 2013 consoles, Xbox One, PS4, that is a proper generational yeah. leap. I think we're going to see the marketing shift away from things like teraflops. Yeah. Because this sure. generation, the weak CPUs made it so that the marketing obviously focused on what was most capable. And the GPUs are pretty good, yeah. especially in the Xbox One X. So it makes sense to focus on that. But I don't think if we were able to look at the teraflops on these machines, well, it wouldn't it, seem like a We can a illustrate that pretty easily because the, um, if we go back to the, uh, All right, let's see. to the Wolfenstein thing, where we've got effectively two times the performance of Xbox One X here, you could possibly say that it's a 12 teraflop GPU, judged by current gen standards. But we are actually only dealing with a 9.2 teraflop output. Exactly. Here. But we're getting twice the performance, because it's all about architectural gains. More efficient. Um, they did sort of mention things like 8K. I still think <laughs> that's kind of off the table with this sort of hardware. It'll, 8K is very demanding. That's, that's another subject altogether. You're not going to be getting no, native no, no. 8K on <laughs> AAA projects, uh, which is CPU. We've already established that just using a really rough PC-based benchmark that doesn't tap into the new features of the CPU, we're getting almost a seven times improvement to performance. So this is why we've seen in the Project Scarlet teaser, Microsoft talking about frame rates higher than anything we've ever seen before. But you know, it's going to be 120 frames per second in, in those select titles that target it, I think. Like using the SSD as virtual memory, right? Specifically yeah, yeah. on the Microsoft side. Uh -huh. And that's a key thing. And that's something that's really been lacking. I think Alex just did that video on Star Citizen, which shows an example of a game that basically doesn't work with a mechanical <laughs> drive. It doesn't work. And the game was designed with an SSD in mind, which means this next generation developers can also target this sort of access on the consoles from the ground up, which should also extend over to the PC then, making SSD sort of a necessity. But I think this is going to be the biggest jump we've seen in terms of just uh, fluid access to the data. Yeah, definitely. And I honestly think that um, in addition to the, to the GPU power, there's going to be some kind of uh, hardware accelerated components there. Um, specifically designed for gaming that will allow these consoles to punch above yeah, their weight. That, that's a key. When you, when you consider what's in the current consoles, the Jaguar CPU specifically, and you look at what's been achieved, I feel like the developers have really grasped with it well and produced some amazing results. Yeah. And, which is why I think even if we, if we see hardware accelerated ray tracing next generation, for instance, there's concern about what can they really achieve. But they've proven that with relatively meager hardware spec, they can achieve a lot. So I'm yep, very definitely. curious to see what can be done here. And of course, um, you know, in terms of scalability, if we look at like Red Dead Redemption, oh, yeah. the Xbox One X is four times, well, the pixel output is four times that of PS4, which again, doesn't equate quite with the, the teraflop output. So also, you were using Wolfenstein <laughs> and uh, Hitman 2 on there, and that's, you know, they, both companies have promised backwards compatibility features. And we've yep. already seen the Xbox One X enhances games from Xbox One and older. So conceivably, games like that, you could run Wolfenstein 2 at actual native 4K60 on the new machine, conceivably. My sort of parting message is there's going to be a lot of spec leaks. There's going to be a lot of confusion about what the specs mean. I don't think we should worry. These machines are going to be awesome.